Today in Quartz Composer, we're going to learn how to use audio input to manipulate our patches. This is the composition we'll wind up with. You're also going to learn about manipulating cubes and lighting them. Let's start with a blank slate. I'm going to launch Quartz Composer and choose New Blank. The first thing we want to do is clear away this checkerboard background to a nice black. Over in our patch creator, let's type in clear to jump to our clear renderer and we'll drag that into our editor. Now you can see we've got a nice black background to work with. Next, let's grab a cube. We'll choose renderer cube and drag that in as well. And we'll align things here. I'll try to keep my compositions neat as I'm working with them so they don't become a mess. Over in our viewer, you can see we indeed have a cube, but it's pretty enormous. Now we hit Apple I to get the inspector for our cube. This shows us all the changeable parameters we have. The first thing is to change the width, height, and depth of the cube to make it a little more workable on screen. Using these dials, you can see I can dial down the width. We'll go to about 0.25. For quick entry, I can type in 0.25 for the height and the depth as well. Now we've got a more manageable cube in our viewer. Let's see what else we can do with it. Move my inspector closer so we get a nice tight look. Let's try moving the X position. You can see that moves it left and right. The Y position will move it up and down. And the Z position will move it nearer or further away from the camera. We'll reset these real quick. Next, take a look at the rotations. You can see it takes a long time to rotate anything in space. That's because rather than going from 0 to negative 1, as a position would, rotations work in degrees, so to go all the way around we need 360 degrees. I'll hold down the shift button and that'll make it move a little bit faster. Another thing we'll notice right away is that while we can tell it's a cube, it doesn't look very pretty. The reason is that we don't have any lighting in the scene. Let's go ahead and fix that now. Over in our patch creator, we'll type in lighting. That brings us this lighting environment. We'll drag that into our editor. You'll notice that the lighting environment has squared edges rather than the curved ones here. That's because lighting is a macro patch, which means we can put other patches inside of it. We'll choose our cube, select cut, and then we'll double click to go inside our lighting environments. We can see here in our breadcrumbs that we have our root patch and then inside of that we have lighting. That's where we are now. We'll go to edit and choose paste, just like we could in a word processor. And This brings a cube inside. Now we take a look over in the viewer and we can definitely see that the cube has three dimensionality to it. Rotate it around. Now we're really getting a 3D cube. But the lighting still leaves a bit to be desired. So let's go back up a level by clicking Edit Parent, choose the lighting patch, and come to its inspector. First thing I'm going to do is attenuate the light just a little bit. This will smooth things out and give it a more realistic look. The second is I can change the X, Y, and Z position of the light just like I could for the cube. So I'm going to move the light down a little bit, and you can see how that changes on the cube. Finally, let's come over to the color, find a more pleasing color. Quite easy to use, you can see it'll change the cube in real time, so I'm going to pick a nice aqua color that'll stand out against the background. Alright, now we can go back inside of our lighting patch and start rotating this cube around again. There we go, starting to like the looks of that. But it's a bit tedious to have to rotate this by hand. Surely Quartz Composer is a better way to do it. Let's reset the rotation here to zero and learn about our friend the interpolation patch. Interpolation. There we are. Interpolation is a controller. Let's drag that in. What this is going to do is send out a stream of numbers, whatever ones we want. Looking at the inspector for interpolation, 
will set a start value of 0 and an end of 360. 0 to 360 will spin the cube all the way around once. And our duration is set at 1, which means it'll take 1 second to do it. And it's going to loop it over and over. We hook the output of interpolation to Y rotation on the cube. And let's look at our viewer. Sure enough, our cube is now spinning away. If we change the duration here to 10 seconds, you can see it now takes its time going around. Or it's 0.1 seconds. It's pretty chaotic. We'll set it back to 1 for now, because it's time to learn about audio input. Let's type audio into our patch creator. We'll pick source, audio input, and drag that in. The output we want here is volume peak. This is going to output a number between 0 and 1 that corresponds to how loud the audio coming into the computer is. Let's hook volume peak up to the height of our cube. I'll come over to our viewer, and now already you can see that the cube is responding to my voice. I think you're beginning to get the idea here. Anything that can output a value can be plugged into anything else that can take a value. As soon as you get this idea, you wind up with a real range of possibilities. One thing I noticed with our cube, though, is that even if I talk pretty loud, it's not going all the way up to the top and bottom of our screen. So let's learn about one other very important patch, and that's the math patch. The math patch will allow us to perform simple calculations on the numbers floating around in our comp. So what we're going to do is take the volume peak, disconnect it from height, and we're going to route it through the math patch. So we go to the math patch, and then out of there, back to height. In the math patch, you can see the numbers streaming in here. I'm going to tell Quartz Composer to multiply the audio input by 4 before outputting. Now in our viewer, you see we definitely hit the top and bottoms. If it's a little too much, we'll go ahead and scale it back down a bit. Maybe around 2 is good. We'll take another look. That looks pretty good. We've got a pretty clear correlation between the audio input coming in and the cube rotating around on screen. So that's it for the instruction part of the lesson. Next comes the very important experimentation part. Open up any patch, try noodling around with some of the parameters, and once you get one that you like, hook up interpolation or audio input to it. Run it through a math patch and see what happens. Have fun. Next time we'll take a look at the spectrum analyzer of the audio input and unlock the power of the iterator.